Hey, how's it going guys? Mr. Boss for the win here. And in today's Red Dead Redemption 2 video, we are going to be figuring out what happened to Arthur and the gang in Blackwater. And even before that, we're gonna be uncovering this mystery that's mentioned a lot throughout the main story of the game. So very briefly, that's something you hear a lot throughout Red Dead Redemption 2. You know, what happened in Blackwater was so bad, the Blackwater Ferry heist didn't end up working, and it actually spawned the entire plot of the game. That's why the gang is on the run, is because of what happened in Blackwater. But we never see what happened there, and throughout the main game, you don't really get a lot of instances where they just tell you, hey, this is what happened. You sort of have to dig for it. And that's what we're gonna be finding out in this video today. So the event that happened in Blackwater in 1899 was officially called the Blackwater Massacre. And it was a gunfight involving the Vanderlyn Gang, the Blackwater Police Department, and agents of the Pinkerton National Detective Agency. This happened in May 1899. And essentially, it was the entire Vandalin gang, with the exception of Arthur, Hosea, and Josiah, they were basically going to hold up a steamboat, where the Vanderlyn gang thought that the banks were actually transporting gold and bonds via boat in order for it to be a lot safer. And essentially, it was going to be the biggest score of all time. Now, this went horribly wrong, as we'll talk about going forward. And according to accounts of the incident, as many as 37 men were killed, consisting of 22 outlaws and 15 members of the Blackwater Police Department. And although no exact number is known, it is believed that civilian casualties were minimum. And at least three members of the Vanderlyn gang died as a result of the fighting, with the third member succumbing to his wounds after the gang had fled to the Grizzlies West. And that's sort of where it leaves us off at the start of Red Dead Redemption 2. We see the gang fleeing up in the mountains in the snow. They're freezing, they're starving, they're dying. And we just hear, you know, so many things went wrong in Blackwater, but we really don't know what happened here. So the first bit of information we can actually get on what exactly happened in Blackwater is a ledger scrap that can actually be found at Micah's secret hideout after chapter three. And it says this, May 1899, outlaw gang wanted over heist Pinkerton's increased search. A gang of criminals believed to be under the outlaw Dutch Vanderlyn escaped with approximately $150,000 after a bloody gunfight with Pinkerton agents in Blackwater yesterday. The bank was moving the money out by boat after a string of stagecoach robberies in the areas. The authorities believe that the men must have stashed the money in Blackwater before fleeing, and the town remains on high alert. This is one of the largest robberies in recent years, and that's where the article cuts off. So this reveals that the gang stole $150,000, which back in 1899, if we uh, convert that to what that would be worth in 2018, 2019, that'd be around $4 million. That is a huge heist. So needless to say, that amount of money would pretty much have set the gang up for life. And we know that they stashed it in Blackwater as well. I'll talk about the potential locations of that going forward. So that newspaper scrap reveals a good bit, but we can actually get more information from Arthur's journal. This is something that people don't read into enough, but you can actually get a lot of details of what happened before the game. So let's read into that. The first thing we see is that Arthur has actually sketched out of what the roughly what the town of Blackwater looks like. So you can see all the streets, you can see like Town Hall. That is a drawing from Arthur. He also sort of draws what Town Hall will ultimately look like, and uh, you can see that in a rough sketch right there. Now, this is what he says. He says, I bought this new journal after the last one got destroyed in that fire all those months ago, whenever it was. Haven't written or drawn down much in the past few months, but I was missing it more than I thought I would. And finally near a store, so here I am, I guess. After all that business up north and the fire, we spent a few months in the wilderness traveling down from the Northern Grizzlies. So that right there is Arthur first getting a new journal. He goes on to say, stuck mostly in the Western foothills of the mountains during the worst of the winter, food was easy to find and life was good. Dutch had a lead for some land we were going to buy, but the land didn't match up to his criteria or he got spooked we were being watched by the law and that somebody knew who he was and we never bought it and we are wandering still 
we picked up a couple new folk in the Grizzlies. And this next page is kind of interesting. I think this is what Jenny Kirk actually looks like. Uh, in case you guys don't know, she was buried like before the game really even starts up in Coulter. So we never saw what she actually looks like, but According to a sketch, apparently that's her appearance. Arthur goes on to say, Jenny, a sweet young girl we met abandoned on the roadside, and Micah, an outlaw Dutch, met in a bar someplace. Dutch seems very taken with Micah, who is pretty hot-headed, argumentative, and full of himself. Jose and I are less sure. Guess we shall see. Eventually, we came out of the wilderness and are holed up outside of Blackwater. Although sometimes I stay in town hunting for opportunities. Following that, we can once again see another drawing that Arthur actually sketched of the Blackwater Town Hall. And he goes on to say, I might be onto something. We got plenty of money and the trail we took was torturous and slow. Nobody could have followed us south and east or figured out where we was heading. We was thinking about California, but then Dutch and Hosea brought us down to Blackwater. So you can kind of see how the story is laid out so far is that Arthur and the gang escaped a fire up north. They were talking about what move to do next, thought about California, but then eventually headed down to Blackwater. And that's when we move on to the next drawing that you can see here. Arthur is essentially just sketching out the town of Blackwater, which consists of a bank, the main streets and such. Uh, and then he goes on to say this, Blackwater has apparently grown a whole lot since any of them was last year. I was told to expect little more than a trading post. But the place is growing fast and it's almost a small city. The town seems to be riddled with corruption, but there's certainly plenty of money here. It's good to be sleeping in a bed from time to time and living a more civilized life after so long under canvas. But I do not particularly like being this near to a town. This sort of reinforces Arthur's hatred of civilization and apparently that consists of Blackwater as well. He goes on to say, we are living here, camping outside town, mostly hidden in plain sight, I guess. Life seems pretty easy. Abigail and Marston keep arguing. I wonder why exactly he came back. He cannot seem to decide if he wants to be a father to that boy of his or not. The arguing is exhausting. I heard talk of a man sounded like Trelawney, but we haven't seen him for many months. So a couple things here. At this point of time, John has returned to the gang before the Blackwater incident, and Trelawney is still gone, and we haven't seen him for months. That's kind of interesting. After that, Arthur says, Jose and I are on to something, something pretty big. Might be a lot of cash coming in to do with a real estate scam Jose thinks he might have discovered. I am not sure yet. The perfect crime, we think. One where we rob crooks. We are being real careful. It's fun working with Jose again. The man is an artist of nonsense. Even if nothing comes of it, we are having an amusing enough time. So this is the job that Hosea and Arthur kept referencing throughout the game, that they were so close to something big and it was a real estate scam. Okay, that seems a lot safer than trying to heist one of the ferries in Blackwater. Interesting stuff right there. Now on the next page, we can actually see Arthur sketching out the ferry that I think they were ultimately robbing. So that gives you a better idea of the size and scale of the vessel they were trying to heist. And he goes on to say, it's good to be running scams again. Hosea is a born huckster. He is getting anxious, worried that by lingering in town, we are going to bring undue attention on ourselves. But Dutch thinks he is also onto something big. His words, not mine. Bank money being brought in by boat. Apparently, so for now, we are working on both things and seeing what happens. Plan is to flee west into the desert country someplace if we can. So they were never supposed to head east. They were supposed to head west. But obviously, as you know, things don't go according to plan. Arthur says after that, Micah and Dutch are planning to rob the ferry in town. They think it's laden with riches, cash coming in for the banks, coming in by boat. For once, I am not getting involved in the job. Jose and I are too taken up with our business, which I believe could go very well. And Dutch seems confident that the group assembled all will be okay. Famous last words right there. And he follows up by saying, plan is for them to carry out the job, then flee into the wilderness out to the west. The next day, Jose and I carry out our scam and join them. Dutch seems happy and excited. He's talking again about California, but he's also talking about a lot of other places. And we actually get some more details of this on the very first newspaper article that you can read in the game. It says, Blackwater Lockdown. Bank boat heist, largest robbery in years, Dutch's boys accused, bounties placed, uh, furnishes a sensation among residents, money believed stashed by outlaws. After a bloody shootout that resulted in the seizure of a large quantity of banknotes being shipped by boat, 
Pinkerton agency officials have restricted access to the town of Blackwater while a massive manhunt is underway. Officials issued bounties on the heads of Dutch Vanderlyn and his gang, commonly known as Dutch's Boys. Banks looked into shipping assets via boat as a more reliable means of transportation, uh, impervious to thieves. The deadly attack resulted in a loss of $150,000, the largest robbery in the region in recent years. Authorities believe that the men may have stashed the money in Blackwater before fleeing. Reports indicate that many are searching high and low for the stash, upending public spaces and neighbors' garden. Residents of Blackwater view the lockdown with contempt. Businesses who depend on shipments of dry goods, sundries, and catalog sales complain the Pinkertons have caused an unnecessary burden to life and welfare. So again, this newspaper article right here confirms what we know so far is that $150,000 has been stolen. But it raises the question, where did the gang stash it? There are many times throughout the game where they reference the fact that the money is still in Blackwater and that all they need to do is go back and get it. Now, one important fact you need to note here is that Dutch's mother, Greta Vanderland, is actually buried in Blackwater to the surprise of both Arthur and Hosea that didn't know that because Dutch says the last time she was seen was in Philadelphia which is a long way from Blackwater. So wouldn't that be a good spot to stash the money in someone's grave? Because that's actually a crime, digging up graves and defacing uh, the resting places of people at a graveyard. So that would be the perfect spot to stash $150,000 because you know no one's going to be digging that up. They were going to be looking in residents and gardens and stuff like that but certainly not a graveyard. Now, one of the big turning points that's brought up throughout the game when talking about the Blackwater Massacre is that Dutch actually murdered a young girl. And her name is apparently Heidi McCourt. And she was a young mother and one of the first victims of the Blackwater Massacre who was shot in the head by Dutch Vanderlyn during the ferry robbery. So, you were there, Javier. What really happened on that boat? We had the money, it seemed fine. Then suddenly they were everywhere. Bounty hunters? No, Pinkertons. It was crazy, raining bullets. Dutch killed a girl in a bad way, but it was a bad situation. That ain't like him though. And she's actually been described by the strange man as being a pretty girl until her eye was hanging out by a piece of tendon and her brain was plastered over the wall. So many times throughout the game, Dutch says that it had to be done. It was the only way for them to survive. So what I'm assuming here is Heidi was maybe getting in the way of them performing the robbery, or she was going to maybe tell that the gang was there and that Dutch had no choice but to kill her. We're being tested, but we are gonna overcome these challenges. Now Blackwater, it weren't nothing nice. I know that. But we... We... have to push on. Even though we walk through hell. Well, we walk together. We walk together. Remember that? All of you... Remember that. That's just a theory, but it does ultimately make sense. And throughout the game, you can hear all of the gang members talking about the Blackwater Massacre in their own way. If you actually go back to camp at night when there's campfire stories going on, you can hear the game consistently referencing the Blackwater Massacre, sort of adding to the mystery and the lore of this entire event that takes place. It's been quite a ride since Blackwater. Since that thing on the boat, you boys know all about that. At least, you know enough. I'm still trying to forget. Got my wings clipped there, then nearly got eaten by a pack of wolves. Maybe I should learn my lesson. And just hope oh, Dutch has learned his. I love Dutch. Y'all know that. But... We're bad men. We're fighters, I know. But sometimes I start thinking about that girl. Well, Javier knows what we saw, and it weren't pretty. 
Ask Micah. Although, he encouraged it. We're pretty at all. I just hope Dutch was right when he said that we had to do it to survive. Sometimes, you just gotta do really bad things, I guess. Even before Blackwater, I had my doubts, but Hello. since then, we've had folk drop like flies. Men I've ridden with for years, just dead, gone. Women and children, too. This ain't <laughs> nothing nice. Whole thing used to make some kind of sense, but now it feels like we're waiting on a miracle or waiting to die, and I can't tell which it is. I mean, we've always had problems, but never like this. Them folks in Blackwater, they was real mad, and we responded <laughs> like animals. Like cornered animals. And all of a sudden, things don't make much sense no more. We have become what we set out to hate. And it scares me. Really? It does. You can't keep reliving that day in Blackwater. It's hard not to. We all gotta start moving on. However, other than those campfire stories and the brief references of the Blackwater incident that happens throughout the game, we never get to see any flashbacks, we never get to see any footage of what happened, so it almost begs the question, is this going to be something that Rockstar builds upon in the future? In my opinion, this is one of the perfect opportunities for a story mode expansion, where we actually see the gang in Blackwater, we actually get to see their story and their life before the game starts and before they're heading up into the mountains in Coulter. In my opinion, that would be really cool, and it would answer a lot of questions that have been present from even the first Red Dead Redemption game. But hopefully what I've told you guys in this video today has given you better background on what happened. And it sort of sets up the scene for the entire game, because without this knowledge, you almost wonder why the gang is on the run. They just keep running and running and running, and they keep referencing Blackwater and money but you might not understand why. Well, hopefully this gives you better information on what happened, and I also hope Rockstar dives into this one day and gives us an amazing sort of prequel to Red Dead Redemption 2 uh, and tells the story of what happened before the game actually begins. But anyways, I'd love to hear from you guys in the comments down below. Let me know what you think about this mystery, the story of the Blackwater Massacre, and more uh, in the comments down below. If you did go on to enjoy this video though, a like rating would of course be awesome. And subscribe to my YouTube channel if you are new or you like daily Red Dead Redemption 2 videos like this. With all the way guys, like I said, thanks so much for watching. Take care and I'll see you guys in the next video.